What's up guys, Brian here and in this video I'm going to do a bit of a follow up to the previous one about ornithology, which is a bebop tune. We're going to take some phrases today and I'm going to show you how I usually apply these phrases. So usually when I practice taking language and putting them into context, I will choose a tune that I'm going to put my language into. So for today, we can do the same tune that we're taking the language off from. And when you do this, be careful to pick tunes that actually contain good amount of different chords. So in this tune, you've got major chords, minor chords, as well as dominant chords. Perfect. And for that reason, I'm also going to take a major phrase, a minor phrase, and also a dominant phrase. So the major phrase I'm going to pick for today is going to be the first phrase. First of all, we need to understand that it starts on the fifth. So D is our starting note. And also be aware of the rhythm. So it starts on the four and. The minor phrase I'm, I want to pick is on the F minor. Okay, it spills over into the dominant chord actually. B flat seven, um, and as for our dominant phrase, I'm going to take the first ending, so the first half of the tune, where it goes, or we're going to check are there any other possible fingerings that we can do, and so the same thing, I think about the starting string, and also the starting finger. In this case, okay, starting finger is our second finger. Can we start on the third or the fourth finger? Yeah, it's a different shape because the note D, we're taking it either on the third fret or the seventh fret. Or. Let's find D on the sixth string over here. Same shape. If I start on the fourth finger, we've got this shape instead of this. So it's kind of similar if you can see it on the guitar. I always try and find similarities and just move them into different positions. And then what about D over here? That's part of the, the way that we play the melody. Yeah, and if you remember, second time round, we actually start on the third finger as well. Okay, and then finally, D on the third string. Okay, you can see this shape, so we're starting on the first finger. Um, we can't really start on the third finger, for example, because I don't like this stretch. That's reason one. And the reason number two is also that you actually end up back into the first starting finger anyway. Okay. Um, nothing too wrong about that because when you're improvising, you never know where you're going to end up and where your fingers are going to be. So yeah, it might happen that you come across a major chord and you want to play this phrase and you're starting over here. That's fine. You can stretch and do your slide or whatever. But just know that, you know, in this practicing session, we know that if we do that, we actually just fall back onto the first position that we started on anyway, with the first finger starting on the third string. And then for the minor phrase, same thing. I'm going to try and speed this process up. Okay, I could do it here. You could use the open string. I'm not really a big fan of using the open string, however, because um, 
I find that it's quite hard to control. Okay, um, that's the first reason. You know, controlling the tone and the dynamic, I find is very important. And secondly, sometimes I'll find that I might run out of threats and can't do the calculations correctly. So then, yeah, I try and avoid that playing on the open string. Meaning that if I want to practice this shape, starting on the pinky, I'm going to take it up an octave. Um, second string. Third string, got F here, or yeah, so this phrase starts on the flat third. very hard to start this phrase on the 6th string. I'd have to switch positions. Or do a big stretch. Um, and then finally with the dominant phrase, one of my favourite phrases, okay, starting on the 3rd of the dominant chord, we'll do it the other way around. So on the minor phrase I started on the 1st string and work my way back. This time I'm going to start on the 6th string and work my way up, okay, as far as I can go, because I know I'm going to probably run out of strings around 3rd or 2nd string if I start there. Um, and let's say this chord is an E7. Resolving to an A minor. Um, I could start on 3rd finger or 1st finger. Okay, I could even go... So there are a few options here. Um, and I would suggest practicing them all. Because you're basically trying to prepare yourself for all the possibilities. And also there's no harm in kind of hearing the phrase more so that it sits in your head. Uh, G sharp over here, sorry, over here. Okay, so just starting on the first finger gave me two options either to use three strings or to use four, or to use two strings. end up in a different place when I'm resolving the phrase. Starting with third finger. Okay. Over here. And I suppose you could actually start on the fourth finger as well. third string. Okay, I'm thinking this shape, E to an A minor. So always linking your melody lines, single lines, with a bigger chord shape. That way I find that it's a lot more safe in that you can visually see it. So you're feeling a bit more confident actually. We were to start on the second string. That's about the only one. And if you start on the first string, you'd have to do the Steve Vai thing. Okay. Um, and let's try and put this into the tune. So for the first time around, I'm gonna always try and 
play the same rhythms as the phrases are stolen okay in the original form and I'm gonna play through the first eight bars let's say okay so it goes And hopefully you can hear how these phrases sit into it. So one, two, one, two, three. Uh. Okay, that's just a very quick example of how I practice that we managed to fit in the major phrase and also the minor phrase. Um, you can do a lot to this exercise by putting limitations, which I will talk about in another video. For now, let's try and fit in the dominant phrase. One, two, one, two, uh, uh. That's about it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you can go away and kind of try and put this in your practice because I feel that this is very beneficial for anyone wanting to learn some jazz language and putting some of that into their improvisation. And remember, you might start off not liking the practice standards, but it's still a cool thing to try and understand, you know, standards and harmony and how those tunes came to existence, basically. Um, but also, your goal might be that you want to play some fusion, uh, jazz rock fusion. Um, but learning this type of language is very important. So hopefully I can try and incorporate some of that and perhaps show you in another video um, how learning the old stuff actually is very helpful when you incorporate it into new stuff. So share this video please with your guitar friends who might be interested in jazz and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!